where I, I see peace and abundance for everyone. Imagine if you're holding your own stock. Your stock is worth, say, 10 to 14 million dollars. It's generating two to 400 grand a year. Who here would have no problem living on half that? They have to offer you a settlement before they merge, if you're a stockholder. Before they merge, before they, if they merge... If you're a stockholder, like, not the you, owner. If you're a stockholder, they would have to offer you a settlement. And you could probably postpone that voting as well through administrative. Maybe. And uh, I do know that if there is any um, uh, irregularities in the trading process, it must stop automatically. So the moment you make a demand to hold your security, there's a maximum law that says that which ought to be done must be seen as having been done. If you go and you demand your security and then they, re they delay in return, <coughs> and in that period of time after your demand they try to have a vote, sorry, that's garbage. doesn't count. My vote would have been the other way. And oh, yeah. All you need, uh, you, uh, you, we're, we're taught to believe that we would need the majority. But you won't need the majority. All you're going to need is one to stand up and say, irregularity, recount, redo. Once people start realizing that they have security, that these securities could generate a couple hundred grand a year for them in their pocket, how fast do you think this concept would spread across Canada? <laughs> I think it would be like wildfire. How do you get our ownership back? Under Section 337 of the Criminal Code. Section 337 of the Criminal Code. You uh, stated before that you don't have a person. Does that make you Ill ineligible for uh, collecting your securities? No. The person, bear in mind, the person is evidence of a relationship. Okay. The person that you have now is evidencing a fiduciary relationship between a fiduciary and a child. That's what your person is. I've abandoned that relationship. I no longer have that fiduciary. I no longer acting like a child, and I definitely am an individual with a right to the security of my person, uh, security of the person. And if you read the Bill of Rights, lawyers they don't make mistakes about commas. Okay, commas and the word and very, very, very important. If you read the Bill of Rights, you'll see that it says that you have the right to life, comma, liberty, comma. And these commas separate concepts. Life is one concept, liberty is another concept. Between the next two commas, you have the security of person and the enjoyment of property. No food or drink, Mr. Thur. You have the security of the person and enjoyment of property, comma. There is no comma between the, the security of the person and property. And the reason that is, is they're actually telling you you have the right to security of the person and other property. They are clearly identifying that security of the person as some form of property. There is, it's absolutely impossible for someone to talk about the security of the person using the Bill of Rights and not open the door for me to say property, property, property every time. These things are there. We've got, uh, I've got a sister, she's a lawyer with the federal government. Well, she's a lawyer with the, with the Law Society, her only client is the federal government. <laughs> She cannot give me information that would harm her, her client. And yet she has also recognized that uh, the, the things I speak, these are uh, pretty exciting. If I'm wrong, I could cause a lot of harm. I pointed out to her, I said, listen, I, this is my new belief. The security is a document. It evidences our ownership in the country. We can collect dividends. We can vote on any mergers. And this is what the government's been hiding. She can't tell me yes or no, but I told her, listen, uh, if I tell people, listen, I'm wrong, I could harm, you have a duty, your client has a duty, you have a duty to your client, therefore your duty is to tell me if I'm wrong. And she agreed to that, and when it came to security of the person, she didn't want to say anything. She did the dishes. I told my brother-in-law, Mike, about this. He's in the stock market. He knows about stocks and bonds and whatnot. He said, that makes so much sense. Elaine, is this true? And the look in her eye. My brother's too smart for his own fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's not something I can take to court. It's not something that I can use as evidence. But when I know my sister as well as I do, and I know my own heart as well as I do, that was pretty much what uh, the only thing I needed to hear to say, yes, okay, I'm going to dig right here like a dog looking for a phone. So how is this connected to the election? Because of this, that the election's coming up. What I see them trying to do is uh, they thought they had more time to get their North American Union happening and because people are waking up to their True. fact of these securities, True. they can go demand them. That North American Union is going to be decided by the people holding the documents. That's going to be you. 
And then we say no. How do you know they're waking up to the traffic? Because I'm working very hard at it. Look at the <laughs> <laughs> and I get emails from all over the place. People are looking at this. A, a young guy out, out in Ontario has done some research, made some phone calls, talked to a number of people, uh, found out that there are security certificates. They're held in Thunder Bay. He spoke with a guy who got to see his a couple years ago. They wouldn't let him touch it at all. Uh, he didn't have his birth certificate, or did he have his birth certificate? Yeah, he had his birth certificate, but he didn't have a demand. So they said, no, you can't touch it. But they showed it to him, and it looks just like a stock certificate. It says Canada, and on the back there is a bunch of stamps from all over the place where they are taking these out and monetizing them and using wow. them as collateral for yeah. loans. For loans to float the national debt. Yeah. So the, mm -hmm. this is our property. Now what I see happening, if you collect 400 grand a year and you just take it and go blow it on, on, on beer and pot, oh, like I would likely do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. The country dies. The country dies. We're not going to have money for our infrastructure and you, you're only going to get value from it for a couple of years. So what we've been looking at is what we call put half back. Imagine a well where you go and you grab a full bucket from the well, you got to pour half back and then you take half a bucket. Who here wouldn't be happy with 200 grand a year? I mean, I think you can live on that. Now you have another 200 grand a year and you decide where it gets spent. You're like, library's fine, I'm going to give a thousand bucks to libraries. I want a library card I can use across Canada. I like health care, I'm going to put some to health care. I like uh, coastal defenses. Here, Coast Guard, have some of this. Hey, RCMP officers, I saw you taser that guy to death last year. None for you. <laughs> that is the power that we would have. We would be able to have a level of accountability that is beyond anything we can imagine now because we hold the money. In that scenario, then the reality over time of those self-directed, self-empowered investments would more clearly reflect the will the of the people. And the will of You'd have a, a lot of, geez, how much? Probably about 60% of tax dollars are spent before they ever get to anything, just paying for the people in the offices who are going to decide where the money is spent. Holy mackerel, we could spend half that, keep half for ourselves. The homeless people, you, you guys have hundreds and hundreds of homeless people out here. They're all born in Canada. They're all worth millions. They could very easily find shelter but the fiduciary doesn't want to let them know about this this fact. So how do we you get? No, this guy in the back has a question. He's been very patient. Um, you've been talking about merger reunion. Um, I'm just wondering. I, I did some research and I found out in the states 